Our next example is going to be similar to actually our first one that involved a while loop inside of a four. And we're going to try to see how does this affect everything. So we're going to begin by analyzing the innermost loop. Just as we saw with the previous problem, just one for loop embedded inside of a while loop, really quite easy to analyze. This takes C n over I time. We ignore the floor function. The inside takes constant time. We take the number of iterations, which is n divided by I and multiply it by C. All works out relatively OK. So that's not so bad. We're going to then analyze the while loop just as we've done in the past. Maybe we'll highlight it to symbolize what we're doing. We're going to analyze the while loop. We'll do that all in purple. We want to keep track of the number of iterations and the value of the while loop variable. In this case, the while loop variable is I. I is initialized to be one and is updated by multiplying by two. So after one iteration, I will be two. After two iterations, I will be two squared. After three iterations, I will be two cubed. This will keep going until the kth iteration, looking a heck of a lot like two to the k. In fact, we've seen this exact thing a couple of times by now in two of our previous videos, so we've done it a bunch. We need to figure out when does the stop. Well, this stops when two to the k is equal to the stopping condition of the while loop. In this case, that's n. And again, that's just an approximation of when does it stop. And again, we are going to add some sort of symbolic decorator to that k to signify that it's a very special value of k. I'm going to call it k prime. We solve that for k prime and get k prime is equal to log base 2 of n. And now, having seen it twice, we're going to go through the next steps in sort of a much more fast fashion. So we get t of n is equal to the sum over all the values of i of cn divided by i. That comes from the fact that the body of the while loop takes cn divided by i time. And now we recontextualize the summation as 1 over k. So we add up over k instead, k going from 0 to k prime of cn divided by i in terms of k is 2 to the k. So we replace i with 2 to the k. And just as we've done in the past, maybe instead of just writing k prime, we write the actual thing that it is equal to, which is log base 2 of n. And now, again, we have a summation. We are in familiar territory. Identifying the type of summation will help you not mess this up. This is a decreasing geometric sum, which we analyze by a particular method that is different than our standard bounding techniques. So to analyze this, we need to bound it above and below. We don't need to, but I prefer to do that. So we're going to bound this above. So we have t of n is less than or equal to. The way that we bound above a decreasing geometric sum is we bound it above by an infinite geometric series. So I'm going to factor out the cn and replace that top bound with infinity. Then we have 1 divided by 2k. So I did two things there, factor out the cn and change the top bound to infinity. And now I'm going to try to rewrite this as one number raised to the k. This is less than or equal to cn. The bounds of the sum, I'm remaining untouched. And I can write this as 1 to the k divided by 2 to the k, which is just 1 half to the k. So let's write this as 1 half to the k. 1 half to the k. And then the reason for doing this is that an infinite geometric series has a very, very, very convenient formula though that converges to 1 over 1 minus the common ratio. So this is t of n is less than or equal to cn times quantity 1 over 1 minus the common ratio, which in this case is 1 half. So that's equal to 1 minus a half is a half. Dividing by a half is the same as 2. So maybe you write out that step. cn is times 1 divided by a half is equal to 2cn. So we're bounded above by 2cn. We need to now bound it below. And this is also relatively fast. We bound below by taking the summation and replacing it with the first term of the sum. This summation is equal to, the terms of it are, cn plus plug in k equals 1, that's cn over 2, plus plug in k equals 2, that's cn divided by 4, and so on. This is definitely, definitely, definitely greater than or equal to cn. I can just drop all those other positive terms. So for my bound below, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to drop everything but the first term of the sum. 
So this is greater than or equal to just Cn. Thus, Cn is less than or equal to Tn, is less than or equal to 2Cn. Those are my upper bound and lower bound. So T of n is in theta of n. And let's go back and label our steps as we've done in the past. This step here was drop all but the first term. All but first term. Here, what we've done is just a bunch of algebra. So this is our infinite form, infinite geo series formula, infinite geometric series. Here, we did algebra to rewrite it as a number to the ah, k. Okay. And in the first step, we used linearity plus uh, expand the range of values by changing the top to infinity, expand range to infinity. And labeling those steps can, again, sometimes help you make sure you can keep track of what's going on. I often reason through things with English in my head, so writing out this English can help me sort of memorize what phrases I should be using when analyzing these problems. Notice we did this a little bit faster because we've already done it a couple of times. This idea of trying to express it as a sum over k is the way that we analyze y loops. We're going to keep doing that exact methodology on all of our examples going forward. The one reason that this was a little different is that we got a decreasing geometric sum here, which had some slightly different properties that we needed to deal with when bounding it, but we've already seen that in the past. We're just redoing it here.